1953, a man had parts of his brain removed by surgery. The brain part included hippocampus, which is now known to be involved in memory. It had a devastating after effect on him. Remove parts of brain? Why would anyone do such a horrible thing? It was done as a treatment. Back then, people used to mess with brains to treat diseases. Have you ever heard of lobotomy? Maybe I have. This is a case that brought tremendous insight into how a brain processes memories. Let me walk you through what happened to him and what scientists learned. The patient is called H.M. He had an epilepsy since a boy, which became worse and worse as he grew up. When he was 27 years old, he went through the surgery to remove parts of his brain to treat his epilepsy. I would be frightened to go through such surgery. Holes were drilled above both his eyebrows. Tubes were inserted into his brain from there. About five centimeters of parts from both sides of his brain were sucked and removed from there. This gives me chills. The surgery removed parts called the medial temporal lobe. That was the origin of his epilepsy. Medial temporal lobe includes the hippocampus. Much of hippocampus was removed, but also some other parts around it as well. So what happened to him? The good news is the epilepsy became better. The bad news? He could no longer remember anything new. Oh my God. So is it like that movie where the girl forgets everything the next day? Yes, except that he would forget stuff in a few seconds, not next day. Whenever he met hospital staff, he always thought it was the first time they met, if he didn't know them before the surgery. He would forget them in seconds. He thought he was younger. He probably was shocked whenever he saw his older self in the mirror. Didn't any doctor expect this? People didn't know how memories work in brain at the time yet. Much of what we know today is thanks to him. So scientists studied him for the next 50 years. Let's look deeper into his condition. One thing is that his intelligence was not damaged. Only memories were in trouble. I guess cognitive ability and memory are processed in different places. He could retain memory for a short while as long as he paid attention. Therefore, he could carry on a conversation. He was able to remember seven-digit number for 15 minutes as long as he rehearsed them in his head. Although it was all lost as soon as his attention was diverted. Not just the digits. He forgot the whole event of remembering digits. This showed that immediate memory and long-term memory are processed in different regions of brain. I guess it means the medial temporal lobe was storing long-term memory. Not precisely. He retained memories from before the surgery. He just couldn't form new long-term memory. This meant that medial temporal lobe has a role in forming long-term memories, but not storing them. Storing sight was another part of brain. I see. So the difference of immediate memory and long-term memory was one insight. Scientists kept studying him and found out there actually were things he could remember. Scientists made him draw star shapes by only looking through a mirror. You know how it's kind of difficult to draw looking at only reflections of your hand and paper. What happened is this. He became better and better at the mirror drawing, even though he never remembered ever doing it before. He should have been surprised when he could do it smoothly. It was found out that there were memory systems other than what we call declarative memory. Declarative memory? It's the memory which we usually mean when we use the word memory. This is when you consciously remember facts and events. Motor skills like this mirror drawing case is another form of memory which you subconsciously learn. We found out that medial temporal lobe is only associated with declarative memory. That makes sense. You sometimes become better at things before you knew it. Other non-declarative memories he could learn included things like habit learning and simple conditioning. Conditioning? They repeatedly blew air to his eyes together with a certain sound. After a while, he started blinking just by hearing the sound. That's an example of conditioning. Oh, that's like the Pavlov's dog thing, where the dog started to salivate only with sound. Yes, exactly. Scientists also found there are two types of declarative memory. Patient H.M. could only remember autobiographical events until 16 years old. He had the surgery at 27, so that's 11 years before the surgery gone. But he remembered factual knowledge such as names, addresses, and faces that he learned before 27 years old. Scientists figured out there are autobiographical memories and fact memories. So the medial temporal lobe is associated more with autobiographical memories? 
Actually, we are not sure because this test was not done right after the surgery. Some think he probably remembered all biographical memories right after the surgery. The memories faded away because he couldn't rehearse and maintain the memories without medial temporal lobe. Other studies do support this take. I guess it means his childhood memories stuck better without maintenance. Yes. And in that case, it might mean fact memories stick better than autobiographical memories. And after decades later, sadly, his childhood memories also started to fade. His childhood memories became more like factual knowledge and not like an episode. So throughout the years, patient HM cooperated in numerous studies. Humans learned a lot about memories from him, as we have discussed. In the meantime, he loved playing crossword puzzles. He probably could enjoy the same one over and over. He died at the age of 82. It must be noted that, while his condition is often explained as the lack of hippocampus, the removed brain parts included other parts of medial temporal lobe as well. It's true that hippocampus is greatly associated with memory, but other surrounding parts also were associated in his case. Well, we must thank him for his tremendous contribution to science. Thank you for watching.